Well, boy, that's a hard act to follow. Uh, <laughs> I'm in a hurry to get things done. I rush and rush until life's no fun. All I ever have to do is live and die, but I'm in a hurry and I don't know why. That was a song by Alabama probably about 15, 20 years ago. And I remember when the song first came out, I, I told my mother, I said, Mama, I said, Alabama has written a song about the story of my life, the way I live my life, because I am in a hurry to get things done, and I do rush and rush until life's no fun. And it's almost as if an imaginary character figure is holding a, a stopwatch over me, saying, hurry up, David, get it done. You're running out of time. And what's ironic is all I ever have to do is live and die, but I'm in a hurry and I don't know why. Now, anytime you prepare a sermon, you know, sometimes you think, well, does this apply to anybody else? But I've got a feeling that I'm not the only one in this room who is living their life in the fast lane. And you'd like to slow it down. But in our fast-paced society, it seems nearly impossible to slow it down. Now, I want to give you um, 10 warning signs, and I'll tell you what these warning signs are. Uh, at the end of it. Warning sign number one, sudden anger, sudden anger. Do you find yourself suddenly getting angry and lashing out at the people around you, such as your family, your friends, your work colleagues, that anger may appear very sudden with no apparent cause? Warning sign number two, how much time every day do you feel overwhelmed with the little things in life? Notice this, overwhelmed with the little things in life. Do you feel that your usual routines are just too much for you and that you just want to get away from it all? Warning sign number three, constant worry. Constant worry. Do you find that you are anxious or worried for the majority of the day? Oh boy, you know, my wife was trying to fix me and she put... She put a, a sign on the refrigerator door. It says, anytime you choose to worry, you are choosing not to trust God. And I thought, yeah, that, that, that fits me. Warning sign number four, depression. Are you suffering from depression and a lack of motivation where you can't get any pleasure in what you used to enjoy so much? Notice that you don't get the pleasure in the things that you used to enjoy so much. You find that life just doesn't excite you like it used to. Warning sign number five, exhaustion. Do you get very tired and then find that you have trouble sleeping because you are worried about too many things? Are you having trouble staying awake in the evening after you get home from work? Warning sign number six, constant colds. Every single cold or flu bug that comes around you get. Not only do you get them, but you just can't seem to shift them as quickly as you used to. You're starting to feel like you're constantly ill. Warning sign number seven, lack of concentration. Lack of concentration. Are you finding it harder and harder to concentrate? Your memory seems to be going and you are frequently starting to do something and then forget what it is that you were doing. Probably a lot of us can relate to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Warning sign number eight, mood swings. Your mood changes from happy to sad to angry to tears all at a drop of a hat with no apparent cause. Warning sign number nine, letting yourself go. You no longer care about how much you, your, about your appearance or your environment as you once did. Your paperwork is piling up. Your posts go unopened. And you even get out, you go out without brushing your hair or ironing your clothes. All right, last one. Lack of time. Lack of time. You fondly remember the days when you had lots of time to do the things you wanted to do. Nowadays, though, it's as if someone has removed 12 hours from the day and you struggle just to keep up, just to keep up. Now, <clears throat> these 10 warning signs are warnings that you are under too much stress, way too much stress. Now, how did you do? Well, if you only selected three, you're, you're pretty cool. You're pretty chilled out. But more than five, 
you probably need to take the time to learn how to reduce and manage stress in your life before it becomes a serious problem. Now, I can probably identify very strongly, probably with at least eight. So, you know, I think, boy, you need to do something. Uh, you know, stress is, 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 is so rampant in our 24-7 society, over-programmed, over-scheduled, plugged-in society, and we take it for granted. We just think, okay, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is the way I'm supposed to live my life, day in and day out. Unfortunately, all this stress is taking a terrible toll on our health. Now, I want to look at a picture here that sort of represents the way what I'm going to talk about today, a life in the fast lane. This is a picture here of the uh, first McDonald's restroom, or rest, restroom. Yeah, that goes good. <laughs> no, it's not a restroom. <laughs> fast food restaurant. <laughs> um, actually, the first fast food restaurant was A&W Restaurant, founded in 1919 in Laudia, California. Then there was White Castle in 1921 in Wichita, Kansas. But on the 15th of May, 1940, the first McDonald's was opened in San Bernardino, California. And that's a picture of it right there. You know, the concept of fast food never made a lot of sense to me. You know, we take one of the things, most, one of the many enjoyable things in life, eating. Boy, I love to eat. And we, we, we reduce it down to, I mean, we, we pull off the road in our vehicle, we drive up to this little square window, they hand us out a bag of food, and then we take back, it's like a pit stop eating or something, you know, and we, we take back off and we cram that down as we're driving down the road. And we don't even have time to stop and enjoy, you know, a, a, a lunch. Why are we in a hurry? Well, we're in a hurry to get things done. We're rushing and rushing until life's no fun. We got things to do. And we can't enjoy the simple things in life. Now, the definition of living your life in the fast lane is, it means you are going, you are moving so fast through life that you're not going to enjoy the ride. I mean, think about it. Is that pleasing to God that you go through life so fast and you don't even enjoy it? No, it's not pleasing to God. You ever ask the question, where has the last 40 years of my life gone? Well, and of course, if you're 20 or a teenager, you're not asking that. But, uh, you know, if you're, you're older, you know, where, what has happened to the last 40 years of my life? You know, life is like a vapor, the Bible says. And since life is like a vapor, we don't need to speed things up. We need to learn to enjoy the moment, to enjoy the moment. There may be people in this room who are living their life in a fast lane and you don't even know it. Like I said, it's just a part of society. It's like being on a fast, you know, Amtrak train, 100 miles an hour. You can't stop it. You'd like to slow it down. You'd like to say, you know, hold up your hand and say, Let, let's slow it down. Let me stop this. Let me get off this train. And you can't even do it. Stop. I, I won't off this train. Now, I want to give you some characteristics of people that live their life in the fast lane. And this comes from personal experience. I'm a professional at it. Uh, <laughs> Everything is, to you is like in slow motion. Now, you're not in slow motion. You're living your life in a fast lane. But everything around you, people, interaction with people, cars, drivers, you know, it's like everything around you is in slow motion. And you're, you can't figure it out. You know, you says, what's going on here? I'm living my life in a fast lane. Lack of patience is another characteristic of people living their life in a fast lane. Lack of patience. And patience, of course, is one of the fruit of the Spirit. Another thing, you, you often rage at society. You rage because you, you, know, you want to fix it, but you can't. And so you rage at society. I, I've gotten to the point I can't even listen to talk radio anymore. It stresses me out too much. I mean, it really does. I mean, I'm driving down the road. I'm, 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 I'm beating on the dash. I'm beating on the steering wheel. And I've had this to happen to me three times. Three strikes, you're out. I'm preaching, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm upset. I, I'm raging at society, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm beating on the steering wheel. And, and the car in front of me will slow down, slow down, and pull off to the road and let me go by. And I'm thinking, what's this car doing? And I realize they're looking at the idiot in the rearview mirror, you know, <laughs> raging, preaching, doing something, you know. And 
three times. You know, that, that's a warning sign right there. <laughs> I, some, I, I, I think some of this may be inherited from our parents. This, because my mother, especially as she got older, she could not enjoy the moment. You know, she, um, you know we'd go visit family and friends and you know, we'd get there. Hi, how you doing? Good to see you. I'd look at her and she'd look at me and she'd say, you ready to go? <laughs> He's like, mom, we just got here. <laughs> and uh, my father used to talk about drivers and, you know, he would, you ever seen these people that are driving a little car like a VW Volkswagen and they're, they're making a right turn and they slow down and they slow down and they slow down and then they wheel it out to the left like it's a big old 18 wheeler and they turn in and slowly my father, it would kill him. He said, I don't understand it. He said, I can make that turn 25 miles an hour. I don't even have to hit the brakes. And I think he was exaggerating a little bit. I don't think he could actually do that, but, but it, it drove him crazy. So I, I sometimes wonder, is this stuff inherited from, from my parents, maybe? This life in the fast lane. I'm in a hurry to get things done. Rush and rush until life's no fun. All I ever have to do is live and die, but I'm in a hurry, and I don't know why. Why? Why can't I slow down? Why can't you slow down? Why am I in such a hurry? Why, maybe, is my life no fun? You ever ask that? Why can't I enjoy the moment? All I ever have to do is live and die. But I'm in a hurry and I don't know why. I want to look at a man in the Bible who lived his life in the fast lane. We're going to look at Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 4. And go through some scriptures here. And I'm grateful this story is in the Bible. I mean, it's, it's comforting to me to realize this. That here was a man I can relate to, lived his life in a fast lane. Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 4, it says, I made me great works, I built me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards and planted trees in them and all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of waters, therewith the, uh, wherewith the woods that bring forth trees. I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. He was a filthy rich man, could do whatever he wanted to do. I gathered me also silver and gold and peculiar treasures of kings and province. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men and as musical instruments and that of all sorts. You know, he didn't just go out and purchase the, the CD. He, he got the whole choir, the whole band to come sing to him and enjoy the music. So I was great in increase with more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom rem remained with me. And that's unusual. You know, usually you, when you acquire this kind of wealth and prosperity, you, know, you, you, uh, you become a fool a lot of times, people do. But he didn't. His wisdom remained. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. My heart rejoiced in all my labor, and that was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked, and all the works that I, my hands had wrought, and all the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 17 is the verse I want to get to. Therefore, therefore, I hated life because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. What was the end result of living his life in the fast lane? The end result? I hated life. Some more characteristics of people living their life in a fast lane. Everything is a sense of urgency. Everything. You know, they say that goes with a type A personality. I don't know what type A per type personality I have, but it must be type A. But, you know, every, everything, everything pops in. You know, I, I got to do this. I got to do it now. Sense of urgency. Everything. Of course, that leads to life in a fast lane, does it not? Another characteristic is that nothing is ever good enough. Um, you know, it's, uh, nothing is ever, never, you know, I was, I was reading a documentary about uh, uh, Michael Jackson. And he said, no matter what kind of dance movie he did, whether it was a moonwalk, I wish I could do that, you know, the moon, yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, you know, he would, he would stop and he, 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 would, he would say, no, I messed up. I, he, he would critique it and say, no, it's not good enough. Everything. 
So you keep doing, and you keep redoing, and you do it over and over and over again. You're not content, you're not satisfied. The desire to do and try everything is another example of living in the fast lane. You know, you look and you think, oh, there's something I've never done before. I've got to, there's something I need to try. I've never tried that before. I've got to do that. You know, we will have eternity to do and try all the things we want to do and try. But we don't have eternity right now. You ever wonder why? Why is that true? You know, I think it's because God wants us to decide what's important right now and to do. And that, that, that means saying no to some of the things you want to try and do. It means prioritizing my life. It means choosing what will make a real impact on others and what will not make a real impact on others. You know, there's a lot of things that doesn't make any impact at all. And so I need to decide what will make an impact on others. Another thing about people living their life in the fast lane, multitasking. Boy, I used to pride myself on multitasking. I would deliberately start five projects at one time because I get bored with one, you know, you know, get bored with one, you know, until someone told me the definition. I heard a definition of multitasking. It means you do a lot of things very poorly. <laughs> I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. That, boy, that upset me. That, that hurt my feelings. And, all, and you don't finish a lot of things. You never quite finish a lot of things. But boy, did that fit me. <clears throat> The desire to fix everything can be life in the fast lane. Now, I like to fix things. I like it when things break. And um, you know, I look for things to fix. You know, let me fix that. Okay, good, it's broke. Well, that's good. I like that. Okay. But <clears throat> I like figuring out how to do it, and then I like fixing it. I like the labor part. But everything cannot be fixed. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 15 says, That which is crooked cannot be made straight. And that which is wanting cannot be numbered. We cannot fix, not now, this sin-sick world. How many of you, you, you know, you watch the news and you, you hurt? And you say, I want to fix that. You know, you get an amber alert on your phone. And you think, why? Why does it have to be like that? I want to fix it. Ah, to everything there is a season, a time to heal a time to fix things. Oh boy, how much I'm looking forward to, you know, what we're celebrating here, the Feast of Tabernacles, when things can be fixed, when the rot, the stench of the sin-sick world can be fixed. Another thing about life in a fast lane, the pursuit of accumulating knowledge can be life in a fast lane. Ecclesiastes says, for in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. And it's sad, you know, you, you know, we have wisdom that God has given to us and we study and we study more and we, we learn and, and we want to share that, what God has given to us. And sometimes you wonder, is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? You know, I, I post a lot of stuff on Facebook, GodTube, YouTube and all that stuff. And, and you know, I, I'll have a little short five-minute message, a three-minute message. I think oh, that, that was pretty good. People need to hear this. And I get 30 views. There's 7.5 billion people on the earth. I'm getting, what, what is that? Was that even worth uploading? You know? <laughs> uh, but there's coming a revolution. Yeah, there is. Now, don't misunderstand me. To be driven is not a bad thing. It's not. To be driven to succeed, to be driven to accomplish, to be driven to make money, that's not a bad thing. But if you're driven and you're all stressed out, if you're driven and you're unhappy, if you're driven and you're miserable, something's wrong. You need to evaluate your life. One of the worst things about, that I've found about living my life in a fast lane is that is missing the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Missing the leadership of the Holy Spirit. When God speaks to us, when God wants us to do, to do something, thing, just a little thing God wants you to do, but missing that. In Romans 8 and verse 1, Romans 8 and verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Notice that there's a way we are supposed to walk. We can walk after the flesh. 
Or we can walk after the leadership of God's Holy Spirit. And you know, driven by the flesh, flesh to pursue this life in the flash, fast lane, that's, that's really not being led by the Spirit. I want us to watch a, it's a short little uh, video here entitled Shoulder Taps. And it's a powerful little video. And I, I'll, it's a three, three, four minute video. I want you to watch this and then I'll, I'll come back. Shoulder taps. So Tony and I are having lunch at California Pizza Kitchen the other day, and across from us I no noticed this elderly woman sit down. She's dressed nicely, and she's at a large table by herself for about five minutes, and then what appears to be her daughter shows up, and I don't recall, two or three grandkids, and they all look spectacular, uh, ready for a nice meal, obviously. And at about that time, a voice in my head starts saying, you need to go tell her how pretty she looks. So I don't even know if we're eating at this point or not, but the food arrives, check arrives. We're going to go down the walkway a little bit in this strip center and look for something. And um, that's the next thing that we're going to move to. So, so Tony stands up. I don't tell her any of this. Um, and on my way out, I just kneel down and kind of get into this position where I'm at her level, right, where she's now in her in her chair. And I said, uh, hey, if nobody else has told you yet today, um, I just want you to hear from me how lovely you are. And she looks at me with a look I've never seen before and says, I know you. And I said, no, you, we, we don't know each other. And she said, I know your spirit. And it gets really quiet between us. And she says, my husband died a year ago. And that's something he would have said to me. And at that moment, I can't talk. I can't talk. I'm overcome by emotion. And I just hug her and smile at her through tears. And I leave. But here's what I know. And here's the reason I'm telling you this. I believe that God taps us on the shoulders and uses us at just the right moment. And what I know for sure is that she was blessed and I was enormously blessed. So I've learned in my life to listen to these shoulder taps because they do happen. And I believe the more that we listen to them, the more in alignment we are with God. And that's an awesome place to be. Shoulder taps. Yeah, that was good. I, I tell you, that was... Um, I know your spirit. I know your spirit. And I had a... Uh, almost ashamed to even tell you about this, but I had an occasion... Maybe you can learn from my failure. That sheet's getting some fuel. And, and again, okay, I'm in a hurry to get things done. I, you know, I was already running behind. Had to be places meet some people or something, I, I don't know, had to be on the job site. And I, I, was, I looked across, and, and there was a guy uh, pumping fuel. And he used to work with us. His name is Andy. And uh, something said, you know, you ought, to, you ought to speak to Andy. And, 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 and again, you know, hey, I'm in a hurry to get things done. I'm rushing and rushing. And, and I, I said, well, I already got my stuff. I, I've got my truck cranked up. I, I need to leave because i, I, I got to meet this deadline or whatever. You know, and I took off. And it was later... You know, I, my heart smote me, and I thought, you know, that would have meant a lot to Andy because, you know, first of all, I didn't even hardly recognize him. He had gained a lot of weight and probably dealing maybe with a poor self-image. I don't know, but, you know, I thought, you know, it would have meant a lot to, to, to him if you'd have just hollered out across the parking lot and said, hey, Andy, hey, and went around and shook his hand. You know, sometimes people just need to know that, you know, they need you to recognize that, you know, they exist and say, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. But, you know, not what I'm talking about is, is no time to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So how do we get out of life in a fast lane? All right, I want to go through four points here about getting out of this life in a fast lane. First one is Jesus, live by Jesus' example. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, if you're living your life in a fast lane, I, you're going to say, no, that's not true. 
That is not true. His yoke is not easy and his burden is not light. But you see, your yoke is you're living life in the fast lane. That's your yoke. You know, it's interesting. You never see Jesus running to the next event, running to the next thing to do. You know, hold on. Uh, don't finish that sentence. I got to go over here and talk to you know, you, you don't see him running to the next appointment. And the Bible speaks to this issue. Psalms 4 and verse 4 <clears throat> says, Stand in all and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Be still. Be still. Psalms 46 and verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Notice that. Be still and know that I am God. How do you know God? Well, you be still. How do you know God? Life in the fast lane? Mm, I don't know about that. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And then there's a story, Mark 4 and verse 39. I like this story. And he arose and it rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. I love this story. I mean, he's, he's asleep in the bow of the ship on a pillow. You know, maybe the, the rain's uh, raging, the storm of life is raging or whatever. The, the ship is rocking back and forth and it's probably helped him sleep even better. And the disciples are beside themselves. They say, Master, we're going to perish. And with the sound of his voice, he says, peace, be still. And I think, you know, if Jesus can do that, can he calm my spirit? Can he calm your spirit? I think so. I think so. Second thing about getting out of the fast lane is, is recognize if this might be a spiritual assault. A spiritual assault. I was reading a book, I forget what the book was, but it said this. It says, even before we are totally awake, Satan is bidding to deceive us. He wants us to be faithless, hopeless, negative, and in a bad attitude. And I truly believe that the bone he throws us often every morning, is life in the fast lane. Go catch that. Oh, yeah. And we don't even think about it. We're up, we're out, without, you know, just chasing that bone. Life in the fast lane. So identify if your battle is a spiritual battle. If so, you know, it's going to take some prayer, it's going to take some meditation, it's going to take, you know, some time with God to, to rebuke that kind of stuff. The third thing is uh, the Sabbath, getting out of the fast lane. Yeah, the Sabbath. The Sabbath is an antidote for this life in the fast lane. You know, I've been struggling with some high blood pressure. I wonder why. <laughs> but I, I said, you know, I, I'm going to take, I'm going to, I'm going to take a Sabbath, and I am going to. I was missing something about the Sabbath. It's a four-letter word. R-E-S-T. I think, how did I overlook that one? How did I overlook that one? Rest. And I took a Sabbath and <clears throat> I said, okay, I'm going to have a day of no responsibility. That's what my Sabbath, no responsibility. I didn't go anywhere. We, we ate, out, ate out on the deck. We, we got in a hot tub several times. And man, it was just an enjoyable, enjoyable, restful and you know, my blood pressure went down. It was low numbers that day. You know, I thought, wow, this is powerful stuff here. You know, the priests, you know, they, they served in the temple, but they, they had rotations. They didn't just work themselves to death. And sometimes that can be a problem, working yourself to death. Sometimes I think, well, maybe we're missing something. I know I was missing something, something about the Sabbath. When I first started coming to church, uh, we would drive... Six, uh, three hours one way to services and three hours back. And we, we did that for three years and six hours total. Today I wouldn't do that. That's my opinion. But today I just wouldn't do that. You know, the, the Sabbath should be, you know, to reset our spiritual compass. It, it should be a time when we can get out of the fast lane. And I've met people that have turned, you know, they can, they can even manage to turn the, the Sabbath into life in the fast lane. Too much going on. I want to show you a picture. I, we went to, uh, earlier this year, it was, I was in uh, Sevierville, and we rented a cabin. I was doing a wedding. 
But the cabin overlooked the Smoky Mountains, and it, it sort of it had pictures and images on, in there that spoke to my heart. This is one of the pictures. It says, um, it says, Welcome to the porch where wasting time is considered time well wasted. There was a time in my life that that stuff upset me. If I told somebody, you know, what are you doing? Wasting time, killing time. Oh, it got to me. But I tell you, there's such a thing as time well wasted. And Sabbath fits into that category. The last one, fourth, the ability to live each day in the now. There's another picture here I want to put up. It was a plate, a dish plate in the cabin. The ability to live each day in the now. It says this, maybe hard to read. Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. You see, life in the fast lane is really about the false thinking that just beyond this storm, just beyond this event, just beyond this next thing, I'll find my rainbow, I'll take it easy, I'll relax. And that day never comes. That day, ne day never comes. You know, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they could only take a few things with them, what they could carry. You ever thought about what our modern day exodus would look like? <laughs> I mean, we would have caravans and U-Haul tractor trailers and all the responsibility we would have coming out of Egypt. And, you know, if you're living your life in a fast lane, so often you don't even recognize that you need to leave Egypt. You're, you're too busy for that. You're not thinking about that. Definition, life in a fast lane, it means you're moving so fast through life that you're not going to enjoy the ride. Jesus said... I have come that they might, I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I tell you, from experience, life in the fast lane is not abundant living. For God so loved the world that he gave us his son. And I think about, okay, what was it about the world that God loves? Well, God loves people. God loves people. And, you know, I was thinking about uh, yesterday the, the children you know, the blessing of the little children. That was so precious. And the parents would bring their children up there. And I thought about something. I thought, you know, that blessing is so special. But, you know, as parents, if both of you are living in your life in the fast lane, chances are you're going to mess up when it comes to child rearing. And I thought, if that's true concerning our children, is it true concerning our Father God? If we're living our life in a fast lane, we're going to miss something. We're going to mess up. We're going to miss the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So the least I can do is get out of this madness of life in the fast lane, to slow down, to stop this life in the fast lane, to take it easy, you know. Don't let the sound of your own wheels drive you crazy. Take it easy. And... Uh, Maybe if I do this, I can learn to love other people. We can learn to love other people the way they deserve to be loved.